Now let's discuss next question of this section. This is the question we have it says fusion of MnO2 with KOH in presence of O2 produces a salt W. Alkaline solution of W upon electrolytic oxidation yields another salt X. The manganese containing ions present in W and X respectively are Y and Z. Correct statement or statements is R. If I talk about the A statement, it says both Y and Z are colored and have tetrahedral shape. B statement says in aqueous acidic solution, Y undergoes disproportionation reaction to give Z and MnO2. C statement says Y is diamagnetic in nature while Z is paramagnetic in nature. D statement says in both Y and Z, pi bonding occurs between P orbitals of oxygen and D orbitals of manganese. Let us solve this question. First of all, let us write the reaction. Now, if I talk about the MnO2, MnO2 with KOH and O2 gives us K2MnO4 which is potassium magnate. Here K2MnO4 is given, it is given W and it is green in color. K2MnO4 on oxidation gives us KMnO4 which is potassium permanganate. Now, according to the question, it is X and KMnO4 is purple in color. Now, if I talk about MnO4 2 minus, it is Y which will give us tetrahedral shape. And if I talk about permagnate, which is MnO4 minus, and it is Z, it will also have tetrahedral shape. If I talk about MnO4 2 minus, it will be paramagnetic in nature it will be diamagnetic in nature. Now, if I write the disproportionation reaction of MnO4 2 minus, MnO4 2 minus disproportionates to MnO4 minus and MnO2. Now, let us go through the options. The first option says both Y and Z are colored and have tetrahedral shape. This is correct. Per magnet as well as magnet both are colored and they have tetrahedral shape. Now, if I talk about B option, it says in aqueous acidic solution, Y undergoes disproportionation reaction to give Z and MnO2. This is also a correct statement. Third statement says Y which is magnet MnO4 2 minus is a diamagnetic in nature while Z is paramagnetic, this is wrong. MnO4 2 minus is paramagnetic while MnO4 minus is diamagnetic in nature. Now, if I talk about D option, it says in both Y and Z, pi bonding occurs between P orbitals of oxygen and D orbitals of manganese. Students, if I talk about MnO4 2 minus or MnO4 minus, in both the cases, there is the formation of P pi D pi bond. Hence, this is the correct option. So, out of the given options, the correct answers are option A, option B and option D. Now, let us move to the next question. This is the next question we have which is from thermodynamics chapter. It says choose the reaction or reactions from the following options for which the standard enthalpy of reaction is equals to the standard enthalpy of formation. These are the options we have. Students, if I talk about the standard enthalpy of formation, 
This is the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance is formed from its constituent elements in their elemental states. Now let us go through the options. Here we have SO2. One mole of SO2 is formed and it is formed from we have S8 which is the standard state of sulfur and oxygen. So A is giving us standard enthalpy of formation. Here we can see we have two moles of H2O. So this enthalpy of this reaction will not be equal to the standard enthalpy of formation. Now if I talk about C option here C2H6 is formed from standard carbon. It is in gaseous state. It should be graphite. Hence this cannot be the standard enthalpy of formation. Now if I talk about ozone, one mole of ozone is found from oxygen gas. Hence this is also a right answer. So out of the given option, the correct answers are option A and option D. Now let us move to the next question. This is the next question we have it says in the decay sequence, we have this decay sequence where we have x1, x2, x3 and x4 removed. x1, x2, x3 and x4 are particles radiations emitted by the respective isotopes. The correct option or options is R. The A option given is x3 is gamma ray. B option is Z is an isotope of uranium. C option given is X1 will deflect towards negatively charged plate. D option given is X2 is beta minus particle. Now let us write the reaction. We have uranium 238 and 92. Ninety two U two thirty eight. Here we have we can see it is thorium ninety two thirty four. So we can see atomic number decreased by two and mass number is decreased by four. So it must be a alpha particle which is 2 He 4 2 plus. So this is X1. Now if I talk about the second it is X2 here we have 91 Pa 234 let us write here 91 Pa 234 here mass number is same but atomic number is increased by 1. So that should be minus beta particle. So this will be equal to x2. Now if I talk about the third particle, here we have x3, it is given 234z. Here we have X3 and it is 234Z. Its atomic number is not given. Then we have X4. It is given 9230 thorium. 230 TH90. So it is a decrease of mass by 4 unit. So it must be an alpha particle. So it is 2He4. Now the atomic number should be 92 here. So X3 should be a beta particle. Now let us go through the options. X3 is gamma ray, that is wrong. B option says Z is an isotope of uranium. If we see here, uranium is 92U238. Here Z is 92Z234. So atomic number same, but mass numbers are different. Therefore, these are isotopes of each other. 
So B statement is correct. If I talk about statement C, it says X1 will deflect towards negatively charged plate. X1 is alpha particle, which is positively charged. Hence, it will be deflected towards the negatively charged plate. X2 as well as X3, both are beta particle. Hence, this is also correct. So, out of the given option, the correct answers are option B, option C and option D. Now, let us move to the next question. This is the next question we have. It says, choose the correct option or options for the following set of reactions. Here we have C6H10O. It reacts with methyl magnesium bromide and H2O. Giving us Q. This Q reacts with concentrated HCl giving us S. Here S should be the major product. This Q reacts with 20% S3PO4 and it is heated at 360 Kelvin giving us R. This R is the major product. This R reacts with HBr in presence of peroxide. Here the peroxide used is benzoyl peroxide and it is heated to give us U which is the major product again. This R first reacts with H2 in presence of nickel and then reacts with bromine in presence of sunlight giving us a major product T. Now we have the options. So all four options have cyclohexyl ring. So from the given options we can guess that C6H10O should be cyclohexanone. So let us write the reaction. We have cyclohexanone. It reacts with methyl magnesium bromide. Followed by hydrolysis. It gives us tertiary alcohol because it is a ketone. This is our Q. Now, Q reacts with concentrated HCl So, nucleophilic substitution reaction takes place and OH will be substituted with chlorine. This is the major product formed. Let us check through the reaction it is S. Q gives us R with 20 percent S3PO4. This is S. Now, this Q on reaction with 20 percent S3PO4 at a temperature of 360 Kelvin gives us elimination and alkyl will be formed. This is methyl cyclohexene and it is given R. It reacts with HBr in presence of benzoyl peroxide. Let us write it peroxide only. Anti Marconi Kovs addition takes place, giving us substitution or addition of bromine at less substituted site. This is U. This reacts with hydrogen and nickel. So, reduction of double bond takes place giving us methyl cyclohexane which further reacts with bromine in sunlight giving us free radical substitution and it is T. Now, let us go through the options. So, we can see the correct answers are given in option C and D where we have U, T, S and U. So, the correct answers for this question are option C and D. Now, students let us move to the next question. This is the next question we have which is the last question of this section which is question number 8 of section 2. It says 
each of the following options contains a set of four molecules identify the option or options where all four molecules possess permanent dipole moment at room temperature so these are four options we have if i talk about first option we have bf3 bf3 has zero dipole moment ozone has a dipole moment so according to the question we need a set where all four have some permanent dipole moment so a cannot be the answer if i talk about b here we have so2 it has a dipole moment it does not have any symmetrical structure c6 h5 cl it will also have the dipole moment if i talk about h2 sc it also has dipole moment because of the presence of lone pair brf5 have square pyramidal structure square pyramidal structure will have some dipole moment so in option b all four has some permanent dipole moment if i talk about c option no2 will have dipole moment ammonia will have a dipole moment pocl3 will have dipole moment and ch3cl will also have a dipole moment because they all are unsymmetrical in nature so c will also be answer if i talk about d option b cl2 is symmetrical it has linear shape and both b e c l bonds are at an angle of 180 degree from each other similarly co2 will have zero dipole moment hence d cannot be the correct answer so out of the given options the correct answers are option b and option c so this is all about section 2 let's move to the next section which is section 3